Hi guys, my name's Kevin Toppenberg. Welcome to my channel. This past couple of weeks, I've been fighting a really bad bronchitis and cold. I tested three times, wasn't COVID, but man, it kicked my butt. Uh, this video is gonna be about the electrical system and you're gonna hear, depending on when the thing was filmed, just how croaky my voice is. Um, hope you enjoy. Now my lathe came with this, what I think is actually kind of a funny arm sticking up in the back that holds the on and off switch. And that connects in the back to a plate like this. It's got three connection points, two upper and then one in the middle. And this is the same plate that I showed fooling around with uh, on the last video. Now there are the two ears and then the third one is deep to those wires. But when I got the lathe, one of those little ears was broken off and you can kind of see it there if you notice the arm has actually been rotated 90 degrees. There I've got a zoom in of the ear that's broken off and again uh, the sad one-eared electrical arm. So I got it cleaned up, got the paint stripped off, got some primer applied and I took it down to uh, where I'm taking a welding class and my uh, teacher was nice enough to take that back on there with silicon bronze. Mm -hmm. And as I showed before, here it is with the ear reattached. It's no longer a sad one-eared little electrical arm. Looks good. Now looking at the switch itself, it has what looks like a tag there, but someone painted over it. Here's the back side. On the left part there, there's an added vertical spike that I don't know what that's for. On the front, someone had cut a hole through the cover plate there, possibly to provide electricity for whatever goes on the spike, but then had thought better of it, patched it with black electrical tape and painted over it. But you can see the patch wasn't very good. I'm going to get the switch arm mounted. And there I've got that mounted at those three points that I described earlier. When I took the wires out, I tried to label them so they could match up. Uh, when I go to rewire it, I'm hoping I didn't mess things up. Otherwise, I'm going to have to pull the whole thing out and figure it out from scratch. The weather has turned beautiful. I, on the other hand, am fighting the crud. I've decided to try to remake this part. So I measured the thickness and it's about 37 thousandths, which is I think it's 20 gauge, it might be 22, but I think it's 20 gauge. At my local Lowe's, they had this, which is 22 gauge, which is a little bit thinner at something like 25 thousandths. Um, so I'm gonna try making it, I'm going to cut it to length and then see if I can find one of those roller devices that will make metal bend. Um, I probably have to do that off camera because it's uh, at another facility. I got my teacher at my welding class to TIG weld a thin piece of metal as a patch there and that would work but it doesn't look nice and smooth like I was wanting. Sheet metal I was able to curve it in a pretty good shape. It's not perfect but I think that'll work well. I've got this all taken apart. I unscrewed all these and wire wheeled them all individually. Got that reassembled. Got this all wire wheeled. Future Kevin here. On that one lead, you can really see that there's been some erosion away of the brass or copper surface. I went back and I looked at that carefully to see whether there was going to be arcing. And the leg that rides on that, I was able to bend it in so that there's more tension. And I think that that's going to work, but I'm going to keep a close watch on that. If not, I may go back and see if there's a way to build that up with welding. I haven't got any burrs taken off this so it uh, rotates smoothly in the shaft. Got the back plate um, spray painted with a black satin uh, spray paint. And I got the top sprayed as well. I've got the brass plates wire wheeled. I kind of would like to figure out how to put that black back in. But I've not done that before. I'm trying to think if I spray painted and then wiped off the surface with acetone, whether that would work or whether I need to get like a paint pen. So I'm gonna think some more about that one. And then the uh, front plate, I got painted blue, and then there's the handle. Now I'm gonna get to the wiring issues in a minute, but as I was looking at this, I found that several of my labels had fallen off and I was gonna have to start from scratch. 
The wires that were in there looked really old. They were the old kind of wires that have like a fabric wrapping around them. And uh, I just decided I want a new wiring. So I'm gonna pull out the old stuff and see if I can run the new electrical wires, which are 12 gauge, up inside that arm. This arm with its multiple angles is really difficult to get this wire through. I finally got one with a fish and I've got the other one on the second fish. We'll see if I'm going to be able to get it up to pull it back through. Seems like someone could have made an easier shot by having a panel here so you could go up at least that way. <clears throat> that doesn't want to move at all. At this point I'm kind of stuck. I can't get it to go either way. Um, I'm wondering if, if I put a bunch of grease. I think that maybe these cables are a little sticky and maybe somehow they're twisted around each other and therefore won't go around the corner. So especially when I'm trying to put two of them through. I put both wires hooked up to the snake and I put a bunch of oil around the casing of, of these electrical wires and that seemed to do the trick. It pulled through fairly well. I think the fact that both wires were moving rather than one being stationary and the other one trying to move by it also helped. Let's get this magnificent switch put back together. And I don't know if I mentioned before, but this is made by Westinghouse and this is from another era. They just don't make stuff like that. There's a top and then there's that row of contact arms and those bevel screws that come up through the back are gonna hold it. But you gotta put the shaft in there first. So get the shaft in. Then put the row of contact arms, get that all in there. It's a little fiddly getting those all in there, getting it tightened. But I think we're going to get it here. Some lock washers, some nuts. And we'll see if we can get that tightened up. Tighten, tighten, tighten. And ooh, doesn't that look nice? Yes, it does. Now we got to get it clocked to the right position. So we'll have to get those contact arms so they move into the right place. So there we got it moving. Now let's get the handle on. Yeah, that looks nice. Now the inner part was a little tight. Um, we'd gotten some paint in there. We had to get that out and size it just a little bit to get it to fit. But then we got that so it comes on nicely. So now we'll put our taper pin, which uh, goes through there. We'll use our probe to get it all lined up. Slide that taper pin in. Come on, we can get it. All right, there we go. Now just a tappy tap tap in the famous words of Blondie Hacks. All right, let's get serious. There we go. And there it rotates nicely. It has a forward, a reverse, and a neutral. When I put this switch on there, I wanna make sure that it's grounded. I've cleaned off the paint here and I've cleaned off the paint right where it's gonna connect. I switched the bolts left to right and apparently somehow it's just a little bit shorter tab on this side because the short one's able to get a good grip. Got that tightened in. The next part is going to be replacing this plug. It's got a, a bare spot right there which is not healthy looking. So we're gonna just put the new wire in there. I got the same 12-3 cord. I've got this arm off the lathe so I could work on it better. I've got it wired. All I had was this black, white, and green wire. So I've put double bands on each of these and I'll match that on the other end. And then on this side, again, the three colors with single bands on them and I'll match that on the other side. To show how much it's been raining. I don't know if you can see past there, but way down at the bottom of the hill where there normally is pasture, there's now a river. It's an old farm pond that usually stays dry until it gets very rainy, then it fills up with some water. Okay, now let's talk about the actual hooking up of the wires. Here is the tag that's on my motor, showing it can be either a low voltage 115 or a higher voltage 230. In the bottom right there, it has the way the wire should be connected for each of those. So I'm gonna be doing the higher voltage uh, around 220, so I'm gonna be doing on that right side. It shows the connection for a clockwise rotation, and if you want to do counterclockwise, it says you need to swap leads T5 and T8. 
So I looked in my junction box there coming out of the motor and I mapped out the wires that were coming in out of that gray supply line. And then I connected that through to the other end and got those marked. Now, before I cleaned up the switch, I mapped out how the electrical connections worked. When the switch is to the left, that five and six on the bottom are connected. And then also across the top, one goes to two and three goes to four. If the switch is in the right position, that bottom five to six is again still connected, but then one goes to three and two goes to four. So kind of a, a funny configuration there. And then I don't show the neutral position, which is where none of them are connected. So went back and looked at the two configurations that are done for clockwise versus counterclockwise rotation. And it's just two wires that need to be swapped, eight and five. I didn't know how to do that. I've scratched my head and I tried to figure out how I could use that switch to make those five and eight to be swapped and I couldn't figure it out. So I drew out to the best of my ability, a diagram of what I knew and what I didn't know. In this diagram, there's two question marks and those are the two labels that I lost and the other ones that I, I still knew. And I got all this information together and posted it to a website called Hobby Machinist. And a very helpful user named Mark uh, sent me this diagram, which was my solution. I'm very happy to get this. So I then uh, filled in the blanks on my prior diagram and uh, I could see that it was all going to work uh, appropriately. But it was confusing to me, and I wondered how could I maybe figure it out for next time. So I decided to work backwards of how to make these switches work. So to begin with, think of the switch as having two input banks. The bottom, which is five, six, that's kind of an on or off switch. If the switch is to the left or to the right, there's a connection between five and six. And then there's a second bank which is have an input of four and it's going to go out to either two or out to three. So then looking at our diagram that I have in the top left, clockwise rotation, bottom left is counterclockwise. So L1, which is the one of the hot lines coming in from the 220, is going to go into that input on six, going to go through the switch, and it's going to hook into that P1 terminal. There's really nothing tricky there. That's just kind of an on or off. The next one is L2. So L2 is going to switch between either connecting to T8 or it's going to connect to T5. So for the clockwise situation, we see that L2 comes in, connects at the input on post four, goes over to the post on three, which connects to T5. That T8 in that situation we'll discuss later. In the counterclockwise situation, L2 comes in, goes to the input on four, then connects up to the post of three as the output, which then goes to T8. And what's going on with T5, we'll discuss later. Because T4 is always connected to the input line L2, we don't even have to go through the switch for this one. It's this last step that's the little bit tricky part. The remaining two lines that have not been connected from the motor are T3 and T2, and we're gonna connect those to post one. That's gonna have the effect in the clockwise situation, which is where L2 is normally connecting to T5, you're gonna have T3, T2 connect actually to T8, and it's gonna tie all those together. Whereas in the counterclockwise rotation situation, which again, which is where L2 was going up through T8, by connecting T3 and T2 to post one, it will then connect down to T5 and it will combine all those together. Now that may have seemed like way too much time on an 80 year old switch, but drum switch apparently are still a thing, still commonly used for reversing wires. And the internet's uh, full of both sales of new products and wiring diagrams. I got the arm mounted back again. I got those wires and then I traced it to my crazy wiring map. And I think that I have all those correct. And then there's the wires that are going down to the motor. And here's the wire that goes to the wall. Test it all out uh, with continuity testing uh, at the motor itself before I plug it in. I tested the continuity on my wires for L1 and L2. It looks like they're good. I plugged it in, there was no sparks. So now we're going to bump the switch and to see if uh, either it runs and the old girls come back to life or if we let the magic smoke out. Ooh, I heard motor.
Now let's tighten up the bill. This is the original cover for the drum switch, and this is a replacement that I made. <clears throat> I put a coat of paint on it, and I messed it up because I was fooling with it before the enamel was dry. The problem is that I wasn't able to get the bend just right. <clears throat> if you compare this original one to mine, I don't know if it shows up there or not, but it's just not quite the, the same shape, and, it, and when I go to put it on the drum I have to fight with a little bit so I can use that and it'll work but anytime I take it on or off it's going to be awkward so I'm still kind of interested if I can if I can make this old one look good There's my patch for that hole so I've tried putting on a layer of Bondo and I think if I do it I might well be able to build up that indent I think that came out pretty nice I'm going to try giving it a quick spray with some flat black spray can rattle can I got that tag mounted on there I replaced the push pins or whatever you call it with uh, screws I uh, tapped uh, the, the surface of that so I think that looks nice I ended up getting this one to look pretty nice um, this is a reminder we put a patch in there and then I covered it I covered it with Bondo got it sanded and painted and I think that looks nice got the tag on there and now I'm gonna use this foam to put on the inside as an insulator, like that. Now the bolts uh, stick through, but I checked that there's no electrical contacts in, the, in that area. Let's get her mounted. I do have the plug disconnected. Has two screws on the top and then two little uh, ears that stick out to catch the metal on the bottom side. I think I'm gonna to have to take the, the insulation out of that top ring. It's gonna make the diameter of this too great and, and the side holes aren't gonna fit. All right, I got that cover on. Right where these screws went through, there's a nut on the back side, and that was hitting on the flange. So I looked at a lot of different options. I tried getting one of the older uh, push rivets and tried putting it through and squishing it in a vise to see if I could maybe mushroom the head to hold it on and it, it didn't work. So I instead took a little grinder and just uh, put a half moon in that little flange on the inside that let that nut sit in there. So I did that here and here. And with that, I am done uh, with the electrical system and I'll just hit it for a second. And my spindle spinning. I don't have all the stuff oiled and everything, so I'm not gonna run it for very long, but another step done. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, it was good to see that motor coming to life. Um, got everything all uh, safely wired up. My next video is going to be about the gearbox, and that's going to take a little bit longer, so I got quite a bit of work to do on it. So there may be a delay before the next video can be released. But I hope you can come back soon. And by the way, there's that farm pond all dried up. And there's the pasture, rivers all gone. Uh, spring is in the air. Things haven't started budding yet, but it's a beautiful day today. All right, have a good day.